Hey everybody, welcome to the daily Lenten videos that we're doing. We're doing the readings for March 24th, Thursday today. Um, and it's funny, we're starting, so this reading from Jeremiah 7 is very, very famous. Most people have heard this because it starts, thus says the Lord, this is what I've commanded my people. Um, I will be your God and then you will be my people and walk in all the ways that I command you and you may prosper. We've heard that one, especially like, I'll be your God, you'll be my people. Um, but we don't often like pay attention to what comes next. And this will be a quick um, video today because the challenge is pretty stark. And um, it's challenging to me too in making the video. I'm kind of like, oh man, if I'm going to say it, I have to do it, which is a little terrifying because after God says that, the next line is, but they obeyed not and they did not pay heed. They walked in the hardest of their evil hearts and turned their backs, not their faces to me. From the day that your fathers left the land of Egypt, even to this day, I've sent you untiringly all my servants, the prophets, yet they have not obeyed me or paid heed. Like, so it's God saying like, this would be really great. We'd prosper if you could just stay in relationship with me. And, but they didn't. That's basically what God is saying. But it's the last couple lines of both Jeremiah and the gospel reading that tie together today, um, or at least in one way. So he's saying all these things, and it's, <clears throat> it's pretty stark. It's pretty harsh. Um, but then he says, uh, you know, this is the nation that does not listen to the voice of the Lord or take correction. Pause. That's kind of a common thing these days. Not, well, okay, it's not even these days. It's everybody. We don't like to take correction. Uh, and if you won't take correction from the Lord, especially during this Lenten season, it's kind of one of the focuses we can do. If you won't do that, you're just not open to changing at all. You're just stuck right where you are. If you won't let the God who loves you and died for you correct you. So that was one thing. But then it's these last two lines. Faithfulness has disappeared. The word itself is banished from their speech. So like, you know, God's saying like, listen, if you just be in relationship with me, I'll always be faithful to you. Um, but they had gotten to the point where faithfulness had disappeared. They wouldn't even speak the word. The, the word itself is banished from their speech. And so for the first part, um, for us, the responsibility is on us to be faithful. I have conversations with Protestants all the time. And when it comes to the Catholic Church, they're like, man, yeah, I mean, some of your teaching sounds okay, but I see the people. And that's not everybody, but that should be a challenge to us. It's a challenge to me every time that I have to meet with somebody and try to explain why I would ever become a Catholic. And that's one of the criticisms. It's like, well, but I mean, it's tough to see them walk in the walk. And that is, it's a stark indictment, but at the same time, it's pretty easy to remedy. It's pretty easy to remedy. We just have to begin to be faithful to the Lord. Now, again, uh, this isn't, it's not all about our behavior, but when it comes to the public witness of Christ, they won't know the beauty of the church without us just living it. And it's scary sometimes. I, I think I say that in all my videos. Stepping out in any of these ways is, is a little scary because you're like, well, like A, insecure about yourself. Maybe you're not a speaker. Um, B, what if, you know, what if God doesn't do anything? What if they don't just immediately convert, which they don't, most often don't. But um, it can be daunting for so many reasons. But we have to begin to be the faithful. We have to bring that word back into the, the culture. We have to unbanish it from our speech. Um, and, and that doesn't come from by being perfect. It comes from by being faithful. So like, um, you know, John Paul II said that there's three infallible, indispensable means of grace. So these three means of grace that can't fail you, and without them you can't succeed. Uh, and he, they're just prayer, uh, sorry, prayer, pray, confession, and the Eucharist. So for us, we don't have to be perfect. We just have to pray, you know, spend time with the Lord, just our beloved. And remember, prayer is relationship. That relationship is prayer. Um, and when we make a mistake, just confess it. Just run to God. And actually, to be honest, that's part of what the world doesn't see is us admitting our faults and running to him for forgiveness and mercy. Um, so we, they either see, you know, not even trying to live it or pretending we're holier than thou. Then you see the entirety of it. And that involves living in community with people and letting them see your life and, and being open and transparent to them. So these last two lines, faithfulness has disappeared. The, world it, or the word itself is banished from their speech. So then jump down to the gospel reading in Luke, Luke 11. Um, and I mean, it's, it's the big one. We've heard it about, you know, driving out demons and um, the kingdom divided its, against itself. But it's these last two lines. Because he's talking about like a kingdom can't stand divided and, and all the first part, but it leads into whoever is not with me is against me and whoever does not gather with me scatters. That's the last line of the reading for that day. It's the last thing Jesus says for this gospel reading. Whoever is not with me 
is against me then. You, 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 there's not an in-between. You're for him or against him. And whoever doesn't gather with him scatters. So it's, it's one thing to say, like, you know, it's easy to say, like, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to Mass, I'm doing the sacraments, and I'm, I'm doing this, but, um, but I'm not really involved in, like, the, the gathering type of thing, like evangelism or whatever. You don't have to be a speaker. You don't have to be an evangelist like, like me and, like, Father and, like, Ben. But if you're not gathering with him, then you're scattering. And we kind of see that in the way that the, and this is a challenge, again, like, please know, like, this isn't meant to be a downer. Some of the readings are uppers. <laughs> this one is just tough to handle, and we have to grapple with it. Um, some of you guys are watching this at like 6 a.m. Your day hasn't started, and you're like, oof, gosh, I haven't even had coffee yet. Well, drink some coffee, and then grapple with the idea that, like, if I'm not gathering with Jesus, I'm scattering. And Jesus is not, he's not ambiguous. He's like, he's not like, okay, if you don't gather with me, you know, at least you could pray about it. He's just like, no, if you're not gathering with me, getting people to come to him, then you're scattering. And, and what that ends up meaning in so many ways is that that public witness of the church is like, well, I, I never heard anybody, like you probably feel that, like I never heard anybody say anything about Jesus to me outside of mass. Like I just didn't even know. I didn't, I didn't know Catholics believed in missionary activity, whether at home or abroad. I didn't know that. Well, yeah, I know, and that's that's something that we we don't know, but it's something that once we know, we can we can dive in again. Please know that doesn't mean you have to be perfect. It doesn't mean you have to get a, sand, a soapbox, and I was going to say a sandbox. <laughs> get a sandbox, um, but it doesn't mean you have to get a soapbox. It just means that you have to you have to be finding ways and to have your heart open to the Lord during the day, today and every day, so that you can be actively gathering because if we're not we're scattering and that that's me too i've been so challenged by this reading even having to prepare this because man what am i other than doing a video what am i actually doing to actively gather people to the lord so that's on my heart this morning and uh, i pray that it's on yours i pray that you can't get it out of your crawl that it's just stuck in there today and that uh that you you wrestle with it and that you be aware that god will open ways for you to quietly gather his flock instead of scattering. So have a great day.